I'm Katie Atwell, co-host of the Edugals podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Interest and acceptance in uh, what we do because it's different. You know, we do um, primarily one-to-one, but as I mentioned, we have a big virtual program as well. And one of the things that's um, so interesting about Fusion is students and families can come in and really create a program that works best for them. Um, it's very flexible in that way. Again, with with those pillars that I mentioned, like the personalization, the mastery learning, the relationship-driven approach. Hey, welcome back. Steve here. And today I'm talking with Joey Lakoff. She is a Senior Director of Instruction and Student Programs at Fusion Academy. Oh, this is so cool. What an awesome discussion. You're going to learn all about Fusion Academy. Thanks for listening. And oh, by the way, before you go, it'd be so cool if you went to my website, stephenmaletto.com slash reviews and left a review. Could you do that? You know, maybe say a few nice words and uh, how about five stars? Huh? <laughs> you are awesome. Enjoy the show. It's the education podcast, your favorite show with lots of groovy guests and they share what they know. So crank it up to 10 and let your neighbors know that here's another show with Dr. Steve Maletto. Teaching, learning, leading, K-12. Teaching, learning, leading, K-12. Teaching, learning, leading, K-12. Ah, ah, with Dot Steve Maletto. Joey Lakoff, Senior Director of Instruction and Student Programs, ISP, at Fusion Academy, uh, leads initiatives across Fusion Academy that strengthen campus instructional leadership, classroom application of pedagogy, and student programming. Her ISP team creates development opportunities for teachers and leaders that serve to improve educational expertise and programs for students that inspire connection and engagement. Joey, we got all kinds of stuff we're going to talk about today. Thanks for being here and say hi to everyone. Hello, everyone. It's nice to be here, Stephen. Thank you for having me. Well, glad you're here and uh, I got some cool stuff to talk about. So let's start first by, you know, what is Fusion Academy? Tell, tell us a little bit about that. All right. That's a good place to start. So Fusion is very unique. I'll just, I'll, I'll say that first. Um, we are a one-to-one um, accredited middle and high school, so college preparatory. We've got 81 campuses across the country, which is so wild to say because I've been with the organization for 13 years and I started at our first replication, which is uh, in Los Angeles. Um, And we also now, as of a number of years ago, have a huge virtual program as well, where we're serving uh, hundreds of students. A couple things to know about Fusion. I said the most important one, which is that we're a one-to-one program, which I think is the thing that makes us so unique. But um, it's, it's really, you know, what paves the way for us to do some really creative work with our students. So... First of all, imagine this. I talked about it being, you know, one-to-one, middle and high school, college preparatory. So you're probably in your head, you're like envisioning a, you know, just a regular school. Um, But you walk into our schools and essentially, you know, you see these offices along the perimeter of the building, but they're not offices, they're classrooms. And the classrooms just have one student and one teacher. And I share this with you because I think when I first heard about Fusion, I had a hard time really understanding what this looked like. And somebody said like a one-to-one school. It's like, what do you mean a one-to-one school? Um, and so you have all those classrooms along the perimeter. And then in addition to that, you have these collective spaces that we call the homework cafe and usually have multiple spaces in the building. So that's where students are gathering and they're doing their homework. Uh, They're socializing. It's where we have student meetings. We have lunches, clubs, and things like that. So um, I can speak more to what Fusion does in terms of instruction and teaching, but hopefully that gives you a good idea of what it looks like. Oh, very much so. I can't wait to ask some more questions about that. That's cool. uh, So, you know, you you talked a little bit about, uh, you know, what it is and and how it appears. Where'd that inspiration for it come from? I mean, who who gets credit for that or, or what team or... You know, what, what was the mindset of saying, this is what we got to do? So I've had the pleasure of talking about this for many years, because as you mentioned, my team is responsible for a lot of the programming that teachers receive. And one of the things that uh, we used to lead was called our new fusion orientation. And 
part of our new fusion orientation was our founder coming on and uh, doing a Q&A, having an introduction, being able to meet all of our new teachers. So uh, it's really wonderful to talk about her. So our founder is Michelle Rose Gilman, affectionately known as MRG. And MRG started Fusion in 1989. And I'm not a math teacher, but I think, what is that? 23, 30, 34 years ago? Did I get that right? I think it's close <laughs> enough. Like uh, 34 years ago, we're going to go with that. And so Michelle's background, um, MRG's background is in education and particularly in uh, special education. She started teaching um, in a traditional classroom environment in Florida. Um, when she came to the West Coast in San Diego, she started up a tutoring program and, uh, you know, was just working with students one-to-one. -one. And the feedback that she was hearing from a lot of the students and families was, you know, that students were having a ton of success working in this environment with her and her staff, but were really struggling in school. And so something that just sort of, you know, pulled at her and nagged at her constantly was these students were spending the majority of their time in schools where they weren't experiencing any success. But even more than that, it was really taking a toll on their confidence um, and their emotional stability as well. They were spending all day in this environment that wasn't really serving them. And then they were having to spend more time tutoring with her just to keep up. So Michelle, I'll just say, is like about five feet short. And she is the most like bold, fearless woman you've ever met. So this won't surprise you, but she, you know, said to herself, hey, why does this just have to be a tutoring center? Why can't this be a full-time program? And, you know, think about that too. Like in the early 90s, there weren't many alternative programs out there, but she said, well, like, let's try. Let's see if we can do this. Um, let's see if we can create an experience where I'm the one that's like giving credit for these classes and students, my students aren't having to go to two different places um, just to try and keep up with a program that wasn't working. Um, and, the, and really the feedback she was getting was that the reason students were thriving in this environment was because of the relationship and because of the individualization that was happening. So it took a number of years, uh, but MRG worked hard at it. We eventually were accredited. We're on, we started on the West Coast, so by Western Association of Schools and Colleges. Um, and that's really how you know things started. And um, in San Diego, she was really catering to students where, for a variety of reasons, that traditional program just wasn't working. Um, and then about the time that I started um, in February of 2010 was when we were expanding. And as I mentioned earlier, we have 81 schools now across the country. We've got our virtual program, but um, it was really, you know, all um, MRG's hard work that made this happen. Very cool. That's uh, what a, it, you know, just a, to be, a, first of all, to have a vision of something, make it happen, and then to experience that it grows over time and continues to be uh, um, impactful over, I mean, that's because, um, you know, if it's back in 89, so uh, you're back in my days, so <laughs> of graduating you know, even earlier than that from high school. So that's, um, I can think, I can speak towards, uh, you know, not a whole lot of unique type programs like that at that time. So I like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and yeah. I'll, I'll say too, just over the years, you know, you would think that we've sort of strayed from, you know, that initial intention and, you know, we've grown up and we've matured, but the truth is, is that the, the, the mission and the philosophy and the approach that MRG started the program with um, is still what we're, um, you know, deploying with our students today. I mean, personalized instruction, mastery, learning, relationship first. Um, and we'll talk more about that, but um, it's something that we celebrate. We do an annual conference within our organization, and it's something that we celebrate every single year is we just call out um, sort of where we came from and how we're still so solidly grounded um, with those initial intentions. That's it's so awesome. This is this is cool. I, 
you know, it's, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, um, you know, when we talk about helping kids succeed or be successful or, or develop skills that they need and so forth, um, you know, one of the things that's really interfered with anything that anybody was working on to help kids um, is just this little thing that happened not so very long ago called COVID. And I was just wondering, you know, if you could talk towards how education is kind of making some adjustments in this post COVID world. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) What a time to be alive. Um, Yeah, it's, it's been, it's been challenging and, you know, it's hit the education industry in so many ways and we've learned a lot from it for sure. But I think what I can speak to is just, you know, how, how I think COVID has shifted the education um, industry a bit. And, you know, one of the things that comes to mind for me and, and likely because we are an alternative program is that I think you know, people have been more willing to challenge the status quo of education. And there's a greater interest in accepting programs that look different. You know, for hundreds of years, our education has looked one way and it's been a sage on the stage. It's been a large classroom. It's been desks and seats in rows. And, you know, that's what I'm referring to when I say traditional So a lot of times when people would look at our one-to-one program, it was, you know, just really viewed as incredibly progressive, but also, you know, um, a little scary, right? We're comfortable with what seems familiar to us. And so, um, you know, Fusion always sort of stood out as this big anomaly, but I'm noticing that because we were thrusted into, you know, so many different options during COVID, people's perspective around how education can look and how learning can happen, you know, it's broadened quite a bit because students have been taking classes synchronously, asynchronously, small group, one-to-one, just a lot of different formats. And I think one of the other things that we've recognized is that a blend of those can work and what works for one student may not work for another student. And so we're just noticing, I think, from the public, a greater interest and acceptance in uh, what we do because it's different. You know, we do um, primarily one-to-one, but as I mentioned, we have a big virtual program as well. And one of the things that's um, so interesting about Fusion is students and families can come in and really create a program that works best for them. Um, it's very flexible in that way. Again, with with those pillars that I mentioned, like the personalization, the mastery learning, the relationship-driven approach. That's one thing. Um, Stephen, can I give you the second thing? Go right ahead. Yeah. Because I think the second thing is huge and it's, it, it's sort of near and dear to my heart as well. And so let me let me just start by saying at Fusion, we value social emotional just as much as we value academic development for our students. And I've noticed since the onset of COVID, there has been a greater care taken for students' mental health and just their general well-being. Um, and and so, you know, for us, it's you know, we've, we've appreciated that a lot because, you know, we've known that this holistic approach is what our students need, but there's been so much pressure um, in the academic realm and not as much attention paid towards, you know, the, the mental health side of things. One of the things that we've talked about for so long is that, you know, while some people are saying that those two things need to be separate, we've said, but for students to learn best, they have to feel safe and they have to feel taken care of and they have to feel comfortable. And once that happens, then sort of the cognition opens to learning. So in our one-to-one environment and even in the homework cafes, we our, our homework cafe staff and our teachers, they're also called mentors because that's what we believe in is that students need to feel really connected and safe in order to learn. And I think that that's something 
throughout COVID that there's been sort of a greater acknowledgement about, and um, I've, I've appreciated seeing seeing that awareness. Oh, that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that because it definitely it, it's changed a lot of, you know, thoughts about what we do or what we need and, and, uh, and, and especially thinking about uh, um, the, the mental health issues that surround uh, just, you know, one of the big aspects that happen, you know, when, when all that was going on and people couldn't have anything to, you know, couldn't be in close proximity of each other and stuff like this, you know, with kids, I don't, a lot of people weren't really thinking about it unless you had young kids who, you know, it, that, that's a big part of their world is interacting with other people and kids in their age bracket. And that goes from young kids all the way through whatever age you want to add in there because adults were just as the same, um, just as, on that same level, except they didn't want to recognize it. And with kids, you saw it immediately, just simple things like uh, um, in a couple of the areas where I, where I am, um, their kids would hang out in the parking lot on weekends with their, uh, in, in their vehicles and stuff like this. And they'd mill about and talk and there's a rest, fast food restaurant right there and they get their food and hang out there. Well, during this time, you know, after a while, you know, they were staying away, but then eventually they started coming back into those parking lots and it, you know, and the funny thing is they'd stay in their vehicles, but they'd park close enough to each other they could yell out the windows at each other. And I just thought, what an interesting way to make that adjustment. But it does tell you that, uh, you know, important aspects of our society and so forth had had to make some adjustments to, you know, to deal with the the, the needs they have, I guess, where I'm going with that. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, kids need connection. I think one of the other things that we... I think with a little bit of a silver lining, which is really hard to say when we're, you know, talking about the pandemic, but, and in some ways it still feels like we're in it, even if we're at the tail end of it, but just this more balanced approach to life. And I think, you know, we talk about that more so as adults, but, you know, with kids, it's especially important and respecting that, you know, school doesn't have to be all consuming. And it shouldn't be. We want kids to have time for extracurriculars. We want them to have time for family, um, you know, and school and, you know, whatever passions and interests that they have. Um, And and I think that there's there's a, you know, respect for that now and an appreciation for that. You know, we hear so much about that, again, from adults of, you know, wanting to work from home and wanting that balance between work and life. Um, And I I think that that's... um, you know, also spread to, to our kids. So, you know, that's something that for us at Fusion, we recognize as well. And that's, what's the nice part too, about being able to have the homework cafe space and the classroom space and being able to create a flexible schedule, Um, you know, whatever suits that student and family, we try to, we try to, you know, integrate and uh, make it work for them. Very cool. And I think that, uh, that's going to really kind of lend itself because to what I'm about to ask you, because it's a, you know, this, this world of needing to have that communication, that contact with people and such um, really lends itself to the idea that you have a more personalized sort of focus on what uh, your needs are for classes and instruction and so forth. And one of the things you've mentioned, I just wonder if we could go in a little more detail here is, you know, what sort of benefits does it, do students um, get from having that one-on-one schooling going on with them? Yeah, that's a good question. So I think the best way to talk about the benefits is to let you in on our approach. And because I've talked about the one-to-one, which is, you know, the most obvious, uh, but let's get into a little bit of how our teachers approach their instruction. So the way that we talk about it, and this is something my team is intimately involved in because we do a lot of the you know teacher training and development. So imagine a pyramid and at the bottom of the pyramid is love and in the middle is motivate and at the peak is teach. And so this is an illustration for how we talk about our approach. And I'm, I'm going to use that as an anchor to, to share the benefits of one-to-one as well. And we're sort of unapologetic about the foundation being love, right? And what we mean by that is the connection between the student and the teacher. And the benefits of having that connection are that, you know, first of all, I think for many of our students, we get to 
restore their uh, faith in education and with uh, teachers because we're we're such an innovative um, we're a different type of program. We work with a lot of students who have been part of a traditional program that's not working. So you can imagine that students are coming into us feeling very discouraged and disenfranchised. And so we have to start with that relationship first. And so, you know, the benefits there are numerous, but just to name a few, I would say a lot of the competencies within social emotional learning. So I talked earlier about our approach being mentoring. So being able to mentor around self-awareness, around self-management, things like that, responsible decision-making. But also when you're one-to-one -one in a classroom with a, a teacher, you get to work on your own relationships and, and how you build connection, your communication, how you dialogue. It's funny because you know some families will say, well, how does the one-to-one -one environment prepare my student for college? Uh, because the majority of our students are college bound. Um, in fact, 98% of our students who are interested in matriculating to college will indeed attend college. And, you know, so we talk about the benefits of them, you know, getting to have a dynamic with an expert all day in all different subjects and how that really improves their critical thinking, um, their engagement with the material, their communication, and things like that. So that's sort of that 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 the base there. And I'll also say, you know, the benefits are again that safety and that comfort, which opens up the opportunity to learn. But then if you go to the middle, you've got the motivation. And so I think, you know, are you familiar with Dan Pink's book on motivation? Very much so. Yes. Yeah. I figured. Nice. So Dan Pink talks a lot about autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And, um, you know, we share that philosophy. And so students get an opportunity to have a lot of voice and choice in the classroom. Um, you know, they we make sure that the way we teach the curriculum is relevant and applicable to their lives. And we build intrinsic motivation with our students. You know, a lot of times at that age, students will work for the teachers that they like. Uh, I know I certainly was that way. And so we leverage that. And then from there, we can help students really understand the value of the learning and the skill and build that intrinsic motivation. And then finally, you get to that pinnacle, which is, you know, our, the teach part, which is all the pedagogy. And I think the benefits of that the students really get to explore topics um, in a deeper way. They get to engage in the content um, in, a, in a much more relevant way. But I'll also go back to this idea of mastery learning. It's just them in the classroom. And so one of the things that we can do is make sure that, you know, we're not moving on to subsequent material until students have demonstrated that they truly understand the material. And I think that's probably the, the biggest difference. And we work with such a wide range of students. So the way in which we design the learning is going to be differentiated. The types of assessments we use are going to be differentiated, even if the outcomes stay the same. So that that love, motivate, teach, I think is a, a good way to think about the benefits. And I'll I'll just wrap on this one by saying what the research has shown is that students who experience that personalized teaching end up learning at two to three times the rate um, than their peers. So there's there's a lot to be said about that that one-to-one -one environment and something that's really tailored for them. That's so awesome. That's and, and you know what a what a cool environment. And, and I gotta make sure I ask you this question. So what does that cafe look like, the student cafes look like? Because that's a cool name. Yeah. I know, right? And it's right. so funny too because students will come in and their families, and they'll like expect to see a barista in the cafe. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, I swear, like one day we're going to do that. <laughs> I remember one of our original campuses at Mission Viejo, we, we did have a big neon sign that said Homework Cafe, and it actually had like a coffee mug nice. um, on it. And then I was like, okay, well, this is even more confusing. <laughs> uh, but I can say a few things about that, which is imagine a college campus. So when you walk in, there's just this cool vibe and energy. Going back to MRG, one of the things that she was really insistent upon was the culture at the campuses. It was funny. She said no primary colors, um, comfortable couches. You know, she sort of had 
uh, and a, a appeal to the aesthetic of things. And she wanted kids to want to be there, to want to hang out. So if you were to walk in now, it would kind of feel like a college vibe. You'd see some cool couches, um, you know, student art all over the place. You'd see yeah, a TV up in there. And then there's a bunch of different seating arrangements. And there's usually a few spaces, one being more of the silent space, one being more of the social space. Um, and you've just got, you know, students kind of um, working on their work, doing some puzzles, hanging out, all different types of things. And then at lunchtime, you know, everyone is in that space. Uh, again, student meetings, clubs, activities, things like that. Very cool. Cause that's, I had that in mind too, by the way, I was thinking, I was, I was thinking, do they have a bar barista there or something like that? So, you know, but it's uh, what a, a cool thing because a lot of times, you know, in, in our world, it's, it's, you know, mass production. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it is what, what it feels like. You're part of, you know, that, that big chunk that's going through the assembly line at the time or something like that. And, um, and what a way to make you feel important if it's one-on-one. -on -one. So, yeah. And I think, you know, we've also taken it a step further and we've said to our teachers, personalize your classrooms. It was, I was just talking with a campus, actually funny enough, a couple of days ago, and they were telling me that they put together an aesthetic committee. So for teachers who were struggling, because this was at the beginning of the year, to like make their classrooms really interesting and, you know, personal, they, this particular campus had quite a number of new teachers starting, um, that this aesthetic committee would come in and essentially do like a design of the classroom and, you know, give them some ideas and, you know, just tips for making it a really welcoming, engaging, you know, personal space. So, yeah. Very cool. I love that. Uh, you know, can you share some specific um, examples of, uh, you know, students thriving in that one-on-one -on -one learning environment? Can you, can you share, do you have any things like that that you might be able to say, you know, like, for example, Steve attended this and did these things or whatever? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that we do say at Fusion, it's kind of our motto, and it has been for a long, long time, is that we change lives. And we take that really seriously. In fact, if you spend, you know, just a short amount of time on our campuses, you will understand what that means. So I'll start by actually sharing something, you know, that caught me off guard, which is, you know, I was at the West LA campus for many years prior to joining the education team. And of course, I was experiencing the success of my own students, the success of our students, you know, on the campus. And fusion graduations, by the way, are one of the best things to go to because a teacher speaks on behalf of each student, their lead teacher, and talks about their personal journey, how their lives have been changed, and then students will speak as well. Uh, so if you ever get the opportunity, because we do have two campuses in Georgia where you're at, we have um, Alpharetta and Buckhead, oh. you got to attend the Fusion graduation. That would be awesome. But, yeah, so I, I met someone who became a dear friend of mine. A um, couple of years after I started it at Fusion West LA, and she was so shocked and surprised that I, I worked at Fusion and and shared with me that her brother was one of MRG's first students, cool. and he was now in his 30s. He had gone there for middle and high school. Um, you know, he was just struggling with focus and attention, really smart kid, but just, you know, needed something that was focused and um, needed to feel connected to the learning. So he then, you know, went off to college and is now a, a really successful, actually, um, entrepreneur within construction. But had you asked, she was telling me this, like, had you asked her parents at that time, you know, what, what their hopes were for their son, they would have never thought of, you know, where he ended up, not in their wildest dreams. It was just kind of like, hey, can we get him through like these couple of challenging classes? Or can we do a little bit of tutoring? And, you know, his story is just like one of hundreds, if not thousands at this point, you know, where we think back to how we've changed their lives. And I have another student, I'll just say, his name is Noah. And 
he came to us and just a really sweet kid. I actually taught him and um, he stayed with us through high school as well, but was just struggling for, you know, unknown reasons with some reading and writing um, and had enough success in middle school that the parents decided to keep him in the program. And he was really thriving socially, emotionally, and academically. Um, but, you know, he was a, he was a student that came in feeling pretty discouraged, which is, you know, often the case and just blossomed in our program. And I was checking in on him recently within the last month. And now he's, this is so, makes me feel very old, but now he's running operations <laughs> for a family business. He went to LMU, um, which is a great college out here on the West coast. Uh, so there are just so many stories like that. And uh, it's, it's really exciting to look back at my own students. It's really funny too, when they request me on LinkedIn, I'm going, oh my gosh, you <laughs> have made it into the professional world now. <laughs> So cool. That's so cool. That's uh, yes. I I I I know the feeling when uh, suddenly uh, someone reaches out to you and you go, yeah, okay, you're not supposed to do that because now uh, now I know how old I am. So <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. And I'll I'll also, you know, what's really fun too, Steve, that I'll share is we have a I I don't know that we I would say a lot, but we have a number of students who have come back now to work at Fusion. Cool. Um, as teachers, as homework cafe staff, because, you know, it's been such a life-changing program for them. And we also have a number of parents who have joined us as teachers. Very nice. Um, I should get, I should get a, a count on that uh, because I, I hear about those stories a lot. And I, I just think, wow, what a testament to our program when you have students and parents coming back um, to be part of your staff. That's so cool. That's uh, th that is that's very much a testament because if they don't like it or there's a problem with it, they're going to avoid it. <laughs> you know, it's, we're done. Yeah. We're move on. Yeah. So that's cool. Absolutely. They want to come back. Kudos. I mean, nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the I I got to ask this because we've talked about all this stuff around Fusion Academy. So can you just tell us a little bit about what you do at you know in your um, senior director position? I can. I think I have one of the coolest jobs. I always say that, you know, when we on our education team, like, you know, my department gets to do the coolest stuff. So nice. <laughs> as you mentioned, I'm the senior director of instruction and student programs and a couple different ways that you can think about the work that I do. One is that I talked about two sides of the same coin being that the teaching and the mentoring and then the academic and the social emotional. So my team has two arms, one arm being the academic kind of pedagogy side of things, and the other arm being the, the mentoring and the social emotional side of things. So that's how we come together and we develop programming for teachers and leaders within those realms. Now, the second way to think about what my team does is we work really closely with our curriculum and assessment team. And essentially they create what we teach and my team works on how we teach it. So Explorations in Teaching and Learning is one example of this. It's a workshop that we've been doing for many years. And we have, last year we had 155 participants go through this workshop. And typically it's our newer teachers. And the way it's designed is a five week program and it's a blended, approach. So teachers will take e-learning modules and then they'll meet in collaborative cohorts. And each week is designed after a, a principle of pedagogy. So we might talk about prior knowledge or mastery learning or organization of knowledge and things like that. What I love about it is that our facilitators in the program are actually our instructional leaders at the campuses. Uh, and so, and then the cohorts are fairly small. So teachers get to then collaborate with, you know, others from across the country. And, and again, usually it's for newer teachers who, um, you know, need, need some more work um, and understanding pedagogy, how to apply it. And so that's just like one of the fun things that we get to do, but 
you know, we did a series over the summer on, you know, we can be really responsive on AI. And um, so a lot of it is around professional development. Um, every quarter we do workshops for our instructional leaders based off either a uh, request that they have or something aligned with our organization-wide goals. Um, so we get to just be really creative. Um, it's a it's a very dynamic team. Very cool. Nice. I like and I like the way you describe it that you got the best job. I like I like that. Nice stuff. It's it's the it's the most fun. Like we just had a campus over in Brooklyn reach out and say, "Hey, can you all do a PD for us on restorative justice?" We're like, "Yes." You know, those are the things <laughs> that we get excited about. Um, and so we we kind of do things that are a bit more um I guess, emergent. And then we have, you know, a lot of our programs are things that, that are running continuously uh, year after year. Very cool. Awesome stuff. I, let's, let's go back into the, the Fusion Academy versus some stuff around school. So one of the things is, I mean, what's the advantage of school, you know, going to, you know, attending Fusion Academy compared to homeschooling? I mean, can you talk about that just a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I'll say I think homeschooling is a great option for, um, you know, some families. I was actually just talking with a friend of mine who lives in Utah and, and you know, has designed a, a really excellent homeschool program um, for her kids. And, you know, my thoughts around this are twofold. I think, you know, there are some reasons why you would you would want to choose a program like Fusion rather than homeschool. But then the other thought is, you know, we work really well with families who are homeschooling their students. A couple things that you get in working with Fusion that you may not get in a homeschool program is we have professional educators, you know, which again, because my team does a lot of that training and development, we're intimately involved in that part of thing. We ensure that our teachers are well-trained, that there's ongoing development, and that's something that you may not get in homeschooling. I think the second thing is just the professional community that we have. There's a lot of different avenues where teachers are collaborating with one another. So in addition to having our campus teachers, we have campus department heads, and then we also have national curriculum and instruction leads. So for example, you would have a math teacher, and then you would have a math department head, and then we have a STEM curriculum and instruction lead. Um, and then with those groups, we have just a ton of development opportunities and resource sharing and collaboration. So, you know, we have sort of the professional expertise of our teachers and we have the professional community. And then we also have, we've been talking a lot about the homework cafe, just the opportunity for that peer to peer interaction. And something I haven't mentioned that I think a lot of our adolescents really struggle with, because it's just developmental, which is executive function. And we do quite a bit of work in the homework cafe on supporting our students just in terms of prioritization, organization, things like that. Um, but again, you know, when your frontal lobe is still developing, those things aren't so easy <laughs> for our kids. And uh, we're just you know, acutely aware of it and really try to help our students with that. But you know, we also have a lot of families that come to us and they've crafted some version of a homeschool program and then want their students to take certain classes with us. So, you know, it could be that they need to take a pre-calc class with us or they need to take a biology class. And so it kind of works both ways. And I know, Steve, we've talked about Fusion as a full-time program, but Fusion is also a tutoring program and we have classes for credit that that students can take. And what you'll generally see is that the majority of our students during that typical school year are full time, but then you'll get into like the evening hours and you'll see a lot more tutoring, classes for credit. And then in the summer, you'll see a lot of that as well. So I think we can work in partnership, but I do think there are some reasons why, um, you know, Fusion um, is a really excellent option when compared to homeschool. Very cool, love it. Uh all right. So what, what do you think the future of Fusion Academy is? Where's, where's it going? Future of Fusion Academy. And we've come a long way. <laughs> it's been kind of a whirlwind going from, you know, <laughs> I, I mentioned the, the first replication at West LA and now 81 schools and a virtual program. Uh, 
Where we're going though is, you know, we, I said earlier, when you asked me the question about COVID, I said, you know, I think that people are really more willing to challenge that status quo of education. And what we'd like to be in the future is a program where students come to us and can more easily craft exactly what they want their education program to look like. So for example, you could be sitting down doing an enrollment meeting with one of our heads of schools, and you may decide to take a couple of online programs over here that are synchronous, but then you may, you know, meaning live one-to-one -one with the teacher, um, but then you may decide that you're gonna take this option over here, which is just a self-driven online program, but this subject tends to be harder for you. So you're gonna take this one one-to-one -one live with a teacher. And then this one seems to be a really cool class to take you know, in, in a small group with other students. So you're gonna do that over here this way. And so it's just really being honestly the most customized program in the world while at the same time holding on to that motto that we have of, of you know, changing kids' lives and making sure that all of those programs that we're offering are being done with equal intention of the academic side of things and the social emotional. So that's, that's where I, I see us going, you know, in the next handful of years. And, and I'm excited about it. Very cool. And, you know, one of the things is we're getting close to finishing up that I want to ask you is, you know, a lot of my audience are educators of all kinds, all right, who are also parents, who are also, you know, grandparents and all kinds of things like this as well. And uh, if you had a chance to uh, just say to them, you know, something about Fusion Academy, what would you talk to them about? What would be that thing that you would uh, want to make sure you mentioned to them all? That I want them to know about Fusion? Yes. I'm trying to think of what I haven't already said about Fusion, but I would say that we care about their children just as much as they do. And you can see that really clearly in the dynamic that uh, students have with their teachers. It's why they show up every day. And I know that that was lacking for me in school. And I often reflect on, you know, my background is as a teacher as well. So my own schooling experience and then teachers, excuse me, students I taught prior in classrooms. And I, I think to myself, what would it have been like for me if I was given this one-to-one -one opportunity or what would it have been like for some of the students that I know were struggling in that classroom environment that that I taught and I was I couldn't reach um, because I think it would have been transformational. And so what I want families to know is that, you know, when you send your child to Fusion Academy, um, yes, you're going to get that mastery learning and the personalization, but let's go back to that foundation of love for us. You're, you're really going to have a program that becomes, you know, part of your family and um, a program filled with people who um, really care for your child and want nothing but success for them because we really know your child. That's awesome. Love it. Uh, all right. So uh, as we're finishing up, I, I've got, uh, you know, where can people learn more about Fusion and wh where would you send them if they wanted to reach out and learn more from you? Head over to our website and you'll see all the areas where we're in. You'll see mention of our virtual program as well if you're not located next to a campus, but our website um, will have all that information. Very cool. I'll put that information in the show notes so they can do that. So I got two last questions for you and they go like this. Uh, how do you keep going when so much is going on that you may want to quit? In general? Yes. Yeah. And, and you. <laughs> and, I didn't know if this was like my educator persona or just in life. This is just uh, in life. This is just you talking about you. How do you, how do you overcome that feeling of wanting to quit? Hmm. If you ever feel it, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So when things get challenging, I, I think what I turn to most often is the idea of impermanence. And that that challenge or struggle is only, only going to last for a brief period of time. And there's, there's always going to be that moment when everything is in hindsight. So, you know, if I'm up against something that just 
feels really insurmountable, impermanence is, uh, you know, one thing that I can always rely on. Very cool. Thank you. And uh, one last question for you, and it goes like this. Do you have a teacher in your past who made a difference in your life? If so, who was it? And what would you say if given the chance to say thank you? Mm-hmm. Of course. Of course I do. So it was my uh, positive psychology teacher, positive behavior support uh, teacher at, in college, actually. And Dr. Richard Maceros, and I just found out um, that he has, he's passed. um, And that was some really challenging news to receive, you know, but we don't often know the effect that someone's had on us until we look back and realize that that was a pivotal moment in our lives. And he shaped the way that I saw our approach with students and you know, taking positive behavior support at the time was almost like another way of just talking about responding to student behaviors. But the way that he taught with so much authenticity and genuine love for kids really you know, helped me view kids in the same way. And in fact, that's something that has been really foundational to our philosophy um, at Fusion and, and my work as well. But I would say thank you um, to him for taking the time to really connect with me um, and to show me that you know, teaching really does start with that, that student teacher relationship. And from there, you know, so much learning happens. That is so awesome. I appreciate you sharing. Uh, uh, Joey, thanks so much for talking about Fusion Academy with me today and for all the work that you do. What an awesome program. Yeah. You got to come by, come to a Fusion graduation. Hey, you have been listening to Teaching Learning Leading K-12, a podcast to help you help kids achieve their dreams. Teaching Learning Leading K-12 is a member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. Teaching Learning Leading K-12 is a member of the podcast network based in Canada called Voice Ed Radio. Voice Ed Radio, your voice is right here. The opinions expressed on Teaching Learning Leading K-12 are those of the guests and hosts. Teaching Learning Leading K-12 is intended to share ideas, advice, and suggestions. Teaching Learning Leading K-12 is produced for educational purposes. Hey, thanks for listening. It would be awesome if you visited my website at stephenmaletto.com and connected with me, left a review, and listened to more episodes. And by the way, you could also share it with your friends, with your family, and uh, your colleagues. Thanks so much. You're awesome.